Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Alrighty, let's check and see how you did on our homework last night. Uh, let me pull up a pen here. Okay, so uh, the hypotenuse uh, and one leg of a right triangle are 65 and 60 meters. What is the length of the third side? So, you know, I didn't draw a picture here, but I certainly could have. Uh, whenever you draw these pictures of right triangles, um, you know, you never have to worry about whether or not you're getting things proportional. It's like you've got one leg, and a hypotenuse. So here's the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longer side, so we're going to put our 65 here. And the leg, I who knows, I mean it could be that this is the shorter of the two legs and you might want to write it here. And then we'd be looking for B. Um, doesn't really make any difference. Turns out it's the longer of the two. And it really doesn't matter if this is B or that's B or that's A or that's A, makes no difference. So if we just take our A squared plus B squared equals C squared, you know you got a hypotenuse and a leg. So let's just, oh, no, I got to make it match there, don't I? Okay. Um, let's say 60 squared, that's one of the legs, plus B squared, which is the other leg, which we don't know is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which we know has to be 65 because that's the longest of these two and one's a hypotenuse and one's a leg. So we're gonna square that. I know this is 3,600 plus B squared. I don't know what 65 squared is, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my calculator. 4,225, 4,225. So because we're trying to find a leg, we're actually gonna subtract this from the 4,225. 3600 minus 3600, which gives us 625, is the square of B. So now we'll take, find the square root. So B is going to be equal to the square root of 625, and 625 square root, that's a perfect square, giving you a whole number square root. So that's how our answer is 65 meters for the length of this particular side right there. Find the missing length of the right triangle. Okay, this is the same process, uh, but they've drawn it in for us. So we know the hypotenuse is 30. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We know the hypotenuse is 30, so we're going to say 30 squared. And I'll just call this A and we'll call this B. So that's going to be 7 squared plus B squared equals 30 squared. 7 squared is 49. 30 squared is 900, so we're going to take and subtract 49 from 900 and then use our calculator to figure out what is the square root of 851. Square root of 851 is 29.17. Do I round that up to 29.2 or 29.17? I think 29 point, eh, whatever. I guess I rounded it to the hundredths place, but you could have also said 29.2 millimeters. It's all an approximation, so wherever you choose to round it is fine. All right, solving equations. Uh, what do we have here? This one's, I think, pretty straightforward, where you have to send in the dive bombers and rewrite this as 2x plus 7 is equal, no, no. Yes, uh, is equal to uh, 16, subtract 7 from each side, divide by 2, you get the answer. Here, you're going to be combining like terms, and I don't think anyone's going to really have too much trouble with this decimal here. And so I would like uh, take away 2.5 from each side, so it leaves you with 2.5x, I, I should say 2.5x's, which leaves you with 2.5x's on the left, and then take away 23 from each side, and so that becomes negative 23 plus 7, which is negative 16. And so when you take negative 16 divided by 2.5, I'm pretty sure that's what you get there. This one is one that's a common mistake because that minus sign means that everything on the inside of the parentheses has to be, uh, ha has to change to its opposite. So it's like you're sending in the dive bombers, but you're multiplying everything times negative one 
or changing each one of those items to their opposite. So this becomes 3x plus 4.4 .4 is now equal to negative 6.6 .6 minus x. So that's how you add x to each side and you get 4x's and then when you take away 4.4 .4 from each side this is going to become even more negative. It becomes negative 11. So from here divide by 4 you get negative 2.75. Uh, keep in mind you should always check your solutions. Plug this number in here and see if it works. 4.5 plus 3.5 is 8. Is 8 times 2 16? Yes, it is. Some of them are a little bit harder to do mentally, but it's worth it to make sure you've got the correct answer, especially if you're taking an assessment or a test. Do not skip the check. Uh, here we have some exponent rules. If I were to expand these guys out, you'd have five of the threes repeatedly multiplied on top and ten of them on the bottom, and then you could cancel out the common ones. Everything would cancel from the top, leaving you with just a one, but you'd still have five threes being repeatedly multiplied on the bottom. So that's how you get one over three to the fifth. Now, if you did this rule where when you're dividing pow uh, powers with the same base, you keep your base and you subtract your exponents, you may have written this as three to the negative fifth, and that would have also been correct. Here, the exponent of rules, uh, this is the power of a product, which means you're essentially going to apply this power to both the 10 and the x factors in there. Then you multiply straight across. So let me uh, just go ahead and do this. This is, And remember, the exponent only applies to what it touches, so the 4 only touches the x, not the 10. Notice the parentheses there means that this negative 2 applies to both the 10 and the x, but the x only gets the 4 here, not the 10. So this is 10 times x to the 4th times 10 to the negative 2nd times x to the negative 2nd, which means you're going to have 10 to the 1st times 10 to the negative 2nd. Those two combined make 10 to the negative 1st because you're going to multiply powers, keep the base, add the exponents, and then you're going to do the same thing here with the x to the fourth times x to the negative second, where you keep the base and you add the exponents because you're multiplying powers together, so that becomes x squared. So if you had written this as 10 to the negative first times x squared, that would be correct, but I changed it so this moved down to the denominator and became 10 to the positive first power. So that's the way I chose to write it. Here, you're going to apply the 3 to both the x and the y. And here, the, it only applies to the y, so that's y to the third and x technically to the first. So you see how that forms a giant 1 and they cancel out. And this is going to be x to the third divided by x to the first. Subtract the exponents, you get x to the second. Uh, I'm going to trust that people were able to just expand this out and figure it out by simplifying because there's no variables in there. But if anybody wants me to work out C for problem 142, send me an email and I'll uh, explain it for you. Complete the table. All right. Are these going in any particular order? They're not. So that's where it becomes a little tricky because... You know, we want the x values, the independent variables, to be going in order, so it makes it easier to see what your counting sequence is here. However, they do give us two really nice pieces of information. Well, one really nice piece of information. Come on, highlighter. Uh, do I pause my... Oh, there, now you come up. Okay, great, thank you. So they did give us the y-intercept, so that was nice. So uh, basically what we just need to do is figure out what the slope is. So how do you find the slope? Remember, the slope ratio is equal to the change in y over the change in x. Remember, rise over run. You're going to keep thinking about that as you get into high school because you do a lot of this work in high school as well. So the slope ratio, which two do I want to take? I think maybe I'll take these two right there. So the change in y goes from 2 to 4. It means it increases by 2. And this goes from 0 to negative 2. It means it goes down by 2. So that ratio, when simplified, becomes negative 1. So that's the slope. So you could have written y is equal to negative 1 times x plus 2, but whenever you're multiplying something times 1 or negative 1, you don't need to write the number part. Just put the negative sign in front of the x. That means times negative 1. 
And the additional challenge, use the diagram in your answer to problem 138 above, that was in, your, uh, in the lesson, um, with the pencil, basically, I think, or maybe, can't remember, maybe uh, problem 138 we didn't do, but it's the same problem as the one with the pencil. So um, shouldn't have been too much trouble there. If you would have looked back into the uh, online book, you would have seen that they're essentially the same process. So if your uh, room measures 30 feet by 30 feet by 10 feet, I drew a, a rendering of it here. Um, so here's the 30 feet, there's the 30 feet. Uh, it's supposed to be square, but because of perspective, it looks like it's not a square. And then the height is 10 feet in the room. So Pythagorean theorem applies. The first thing we have to do is find this diagonal so that we can find the vertical um, right triangle dimensions. So this is the hypotenuse of this right triangle that's formed on the floor of the room. And then that becomes a leg of the right triangle with the hypotenuse going from one corner down here to the next corner up top. So this is essentially the greatest distance that you can find within this classroom with these as the dimensions. So let's start with this uh, hypotenuse here. 30 and 30 are the two legs. So 30 squared plus 30 squared ends up being 1800. The square root of 1800 rounds off to 42.4. So I wrote that in. That's the distance from here to here if you just measured along the floor. Now that's a leg, and this is a leg. The height of the room becomes a leg. So 10 squared plus 42.4 squared equals 16 squared. Now I talked about this yesterday. You could, since I rounded that off, if you took 42.4 and squared it, you're not going to get 1,800. But if you, you know, squaring and square rooting are opposites of each other. So if you take 1,800, find the square root of it, that's the actual perfect answer. Well, no, I guess they still round it. But still, that's as close as you're going to get. So if you turn around and just square that again, it gets you back to where you started. So I just decided to write 1,800. That squared would be back to where you were here. 1800, 100 plus 1800 is 1900, and the square root of 1900 rounds off to 43.6. So this is approximately 43.6. Uh, if you had taken, what is that, 1900, square root of that, if you'd written 43.59 feet, that would have been fine. But uh, I think most of you probably would have rounded that to 43.6. So uh, hopefully you did well on this homework and you understand this pretty well. Tomorrow, no, I'm recording this uh, yesterday. So today, you, uh, I'm going to have some links to Khan Academy so you can go through and explore a little bit more of this idea of uh, you know, applications of Pythagorean theorem and maybe seeing it in, in three-dimensional contexts. And then we're going to do a, a new lesson on Wednesday, uh, 9.2.7. So I uh, hope you did well on this, and uh, good luck on all of your Khan Academy explorations. And we will be taking the chapter test on Friday. So hopefully you get enough of this Pythagorean theorem to be an expert by the time the test comes up. All right, take care. Hey, feeling good.